<laughs> so I don't know. Is it like if you put seafood in it? Yes. Is it still gonna be a chowder if it's like if it doesn't have a cream sauce in it? I guess so because corn chowder is disgusting. I would never do. Yeah, uh, I, think it's I can't. Really, do it. I'm sorry, Jerry. No, like that, corn chowder, but I'm not. I, I, it has to have seafood in it. I that does not have any place in my book. I don't really see where. Are we? Is that yeah. Are we live? Oh, hey, we're live. Hey, hey perfect. Uh, right. Welcome back. <laughs> Good Welcome back. Morning. Live. Uh, only a couple minutes behind. Uh, yeah. uh, it's like a couple of seconds. But. <laughs> So uh, we have an interesting show today. We have a special guest, of course, Jerry, Julian. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, having me. From Fuji. Jerry's here from Fuji. And uh, you're here because we want to talk about some new exciting products that have yeah, come out. Of course. But also some exciting software that's come out. Fuji's making a lot of, a lot of big waves right now. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting end of year. We don't have a ton of new hardware, but we're seeing the big firmwares coming out soon. Yes. Um, we don't have the latest version with the X-Pro 4K and stuff like that, but we've got right. the tethering support. We've got the 80 mil as well, and this is one of the most requested lenses from Fuji it for is, some time. Yeah. There's yeah. a longer one-to-one -one macro. I think a lot of people are excited about that. As usual, so, guys, hit us with all your questions as we go through this. We'll take time to answer a lot of them. And not just about these. Any questions you have about Fuji, that's why correct. we have a Fuji guy. Hopefully everything sounds okay and it looks okay as yeah. usual. As usual, yeah. Please let us know if there's any technical hiccups in the first five minutes. Now, as a total side point, uh, just keep in mind, you may notice that Jordan is wearing this brand new baseball style shirt, BNC. Very handsome, very nice. Uh, Beers and cameras, we've got brand new t-shirts, uh, we've got hats, we've got buttons, um, yeah. Yeah, and what's check cool, we've always said if you're local, come check out a Beers and Cameras event, but they're springing up all over the place. Exactly. Uh, take a look on their website, see if there might be one at a city that you're nearby or live in. And if not, move. Yeah, because it's great. Yeah. Uh, hang out, drink some beers, talk about cameras. We just had one the <laughs> other day, it was a fun time. So check Yeah, and actually, yeah, Fuji, Fuji yeah. sponsored that, was really good. Yeah, you guys a got a lot of, of uh, people. Perfect. Yeah, great group. Yeah, yeah check yeah, it, it out. A lot of fun. Check it out or move to Calgary or San, well, San, move to San Diego. That's gorgeous. The it's, ocean and the, it's really that, nice. There. That's our strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we're going to find a way to get San Diego. Yeah. So as well, we have the XC3 here. Chris and I went out. We shot our review for that just the other day. Uh, but it, since I'm still working on the GH5 video, as I will be for the rest of time, uh, that's not available yet. So it's any soon. questions you got about the XC3, we'll certainly <laughs> answer those without spoiling our full opinions in the final review. Yes, here. as usual, feel free to shout out your questions. Ask Jerry all these difficult questions about Fuji. He'd be happy to answer them for you. Or at least try. Stumble through it. Whatever. Stumble yeah, through yeah, you know, it. Yeah, wing it. Pretend. Wing it. That's what <laughs> we do. Wing it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, why don't we talk about this beautiful new camera uh, that you have here, Jerry, the X-E3. Yeah, so this is our latest. It's the smallest one we've made as far as mirrorless cameras. It's a minimalist design. It's, the idea is that you can take it anywhere. That's really the idea. Right. It's got a better grip than, say, the X-E2 had. So it feels better in your hand a little bit. And what we've added is the joy the AF joystick. Yeah, I mean, we saw this in Japan. We got a sneak peek on it. It was yeah. pretty awesome. I, we can say that now, yeah. right, Jeff? Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we saw it in Japan. It was really, really cool. And Jordan, the first thing he said was, that's probably the most beautiful Fuji camera he's seen. Yeah. And of course, I disagreed with that right away. But I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, hey, that's opinion, opinion, right? right? Express Absolutely. a subjective opinion. Of yeah. course, of course. I mean, he's entitled to his subjective opinion. He's just wrong. But it's a very handsome looking camera. Um, yeah, it looks certainly. really good. We've added some new features to it. Um, new AF algorithms for continuous tracking. Yes. Um, which is really huge. Uh, with mirrorless, as we know, that's always been um, one of our challenges is to keep up with the DSLRs and being able to do sports and things like that. I think we're pretty much there now. And that's it's interesting. We did try tracking. It yeah. actually did a really good job. I mean, the X-T2 is sort of your de facto. Like, yeah, that's our... journalistic our, kind of it. camera. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this was very, very impressive. Yeah. So why why in a camera like this? Why is this the first choice? Uh, for the AF, you mean? Yeah. yeah. For the new AF. Well, I, I think it was just, you know, as you develop product and processors and things like that when you're writing code and you refine and fine tune, you put it into the new camera and then of course, you know, Fuji, right? Yes. You know <laughs> Fuji, right? So be patient, you're gonna get the same algorithms in the X-Pro2 and the X-T2 as well. So um, so yeah, we're gonna get uh, great performance and, and those that have X-T2s are gonna get the support that they want for sure. Cool. Yeah, I think that we kind of looked at this as a test bed for that new firmware yeah. is kind of how we're looking yeah. at it right now. And yeah, so far it seems, we didn't notice a huge difference single point, point to point, right. but certainly in continuous tracking, it just seemed to hit, especially if you were using a set focus point, like oh, yeah. your subject moved through that, it was bang on. Very 
consistently. Very good, tracked yeah. it very well. Even even um, like a subject moving really fast, very close to you, I was quite impressed by that. Awesome. It actually still tracked and followed it quite yeah. well. So. Well, we know we always like to hear what you guys have to say because you guys put it through a pretty rigorous test. Yeah, there's so some stuff like I don't that. like, but <laughs> hey, you know what? Again, it, it's all subjective. We'll talk about stuff. that, right? Sure, for sure. Um, we added Bluetooth to this one. Right. And, and I'm going to clarify a little bit of how the Bluetooth actually works. Please do, yeah. So the Bluetooth is going to facilitate the connection to the Wi-Fi. Now, a lot of people are asking, can I just use Bluetooth to transfer the files over to my right. phone? Right now, no. Um, the speed for live view and for transfer, we need the Wi-Fi. So yeah. okay. you do need the Wi-Fi. Um, if you're Android, it'll automatically switch. Mm -hmm. um, iOS, you know, there's a little more selection process sometimes to, mm -hmm. to, to go through, but with, with uh, you just need to select your Wi-Fi. Um, to get started, but when it comes to Android, it'll automatically switch to your, to your Wi-Fi. So just a way to keep the connection live, yeah. not have to worry about re-signing up, reconnecting no. all the yeah. time. Yeah. And I mean, those days seem to be pretty much gone, which is great. Yeah. Right, and what's really cool is that with the camera, you can actually go and tag the, cam the images in camera, mm -hmm. and then as you're connecting, it will automatically dump. You don't have to go and review your images, you don't have to play them back in the, in the phone itself, or in the tablet, you just Keep hit, shooting. It, yeah. it just hit connect and it will uh, transfer the files gotcha. across. Well, and what's really cool too is most of the upgrades we'll see down the road are again software based. So right. now that we have a camera with Wi Fi and Bluetooth, you're right. not really restricted in what you can do with the software down the road. Where right. we may see, you know, on cameras like the XT20, it might not get some of the functionality right. that we're seeing with the Bluetooth because it doesn't have that signal. Correct. Yeah, it doesn't have the, the hardware yeah. built so, right. into it. But obviously, this is something we're just going to have incorporated in the future. Oh, yeah. Saying, I mean, once, once we get started, then we keep going with it. Yeah, absolutely. So if this is a camera, where you're constantly throwing stuff up on Instagram and stuff while you're actively out shooting, yeah. then the X-T3 is probably the best choice right. in the Fuji lineup. And, right and that brings up a point because, you know, we, we just played with the X-T20 in Japan. It's right. still a fairly new camera, doing yep. very well. You yeah. know, and I personally love it. I think it's a fantastic design. So when the X-T3 came out and we're looking at the two cameras side by side, I think most people would be forgiven for, for kind of the first thought being like, what's the point? Like other than right. a, you know, look at a sort of ergonomic kind of difference, why have such a, why have such similar cameras you know but that being said yeah it, it goes beyond just image quality right I mean this it camera does. really does have a very different uh, design aesthetic you're aiming mm -hmm. at a different crowd of people perhaps. yeah we are we are and 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 I think what it comes down to is is choice mm -hmm. right having the choice some people do like the rangefinder style and using yes. right eyes uh, right eye shooting um, I think the the idea really with this one was to keep it small keep it compact mm -hmm. the XT20 is fantastic it's it's a great I camera for for quick videos and things like that and great still image quality. Um, but I think with the X-E3, the, the biggest thing was just trying to keep it a small compact design. The X-E2 and the X-E1 were fantastic successes for us. Right. And we still have that install base and we don't want to forget about them as well. So we want to keep them uh, sure. going as well. And, and we decided not to use a tilt screen and things like that to keep that differentiation a little bit, I guess. Right. Uh, th at least that's what I think. Um, but I think it's, it's more about, you know, just being able to pretty much put it anywhere. I mean, I can put a, say the 18 F2 or even the 27 on this mm -hmm. and I can put it in my pocket. Yeah, it's right. just as small as the X100. And in fact, it's actually a little bit smaller. I do love the joystick control as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, is everything. It, it does keep it very streamlined. You can get your point going wherever you want, yeah. but you are relying on that to really navigate menus as well, hey? Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, mean no to some extent. That's such a, such yeah. a, for me, it was such a weird thing. I'm like, oh, there's, you know, I want there's a space there. Yeah. yeah, and now that is true. And also but with the Q menu, you also do have touch, touch screen, control. Yeah. touch control as well. Um, the touch is really responsive. I really like the touch control on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it works really, really well. And if you're really missing that four-way control, uh, you know, the, the, the custom buttons of it, you know, yep. ISO and yeah. flash control stuff, you can do that through the touch screen. You yeah, can set you it can, up the function a virtual you, control You swipe, pad. right? You swipe up and it gives There's you whatever, your autofocus yeah, mode. your autofocus right, right, point. Right. Or you can program it too. Yeah. Just like all the other function buttons that we were allowing. You can really customize the camera the way you need it. I kind of like it, and it reminds me a lot of the film bodies where you would say, you're not buying this camera because of this image quality or whatever. It's like, this camera feels great to me. It's and the user experience well. at the end of the yeah. day, Because right? I certainly griped a little bit about the X-Pro2 with it lacking the tethering support, things like that. I was like, why are they trying to segment these? Just say, they all have the same features, by the one that feels great in your hand. Yep. Yeah. We're starting to see now with the tethering coming back, the 4K video coming with software, yeah. things are going back to where I always wanted them well, yeah. in the Fuji line where it's just 
get the body that feels great well, it's, for you. It's exactly. funny because, yeah. like, you know, being being I'm old now. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but you know, being being in the video game age and growing up with the internet and stuff like that, yeah. I have to admit, my first crappy attitude was like, why would Fuji make two things that are very very similar? And then I started thinking, like, why am I complaining about that? <laughs> you know what I mean, like, you're a consumer. You want choice at the end of the day. I want right? choice. Yeah. Like, yeah, why not be? Who cares if you guys yeah. make another camera? It's up to me if I want to buy it or not. And so I think, yeah. if anything, it's great. I can just decide, like, yeah, this suits my lifestyle better, or this suits it. Yep. They don't have. We don't have to have cameras that are differentiated in huge no, ways. No, I mean, I you know, physically. I'm a little spoiled being a Fuji guy. I kind of have too much choice. It right. gets to a point where I can choose any camera I want to use at that particular time. And, and I really do start choosing my camera based on what I'm shooting. So if I'm doing my family reunion and I'm f taking pictures of my family, I'll use the Pro 2 because mm. then I can use the right eye, get a little bit closer to my family and, and have more of that rapport with them. Whereas if I'm mm. doing sports, my dog, kids, uh, a wedding or something like that, um, I'd use the X-T2 with the grip right. and, and do all that. Professional well. Well. Yeah, yeah sure, so yeah. it's really about that user experience. Now, I want to just talk about one more feature that I did really like on here that yeah. I actually liked. I'll be honest, Nikon kind of did it first though, as yep. I've seen it, and that is being able to move your focusing point with the touchpad Correct. while your eyes up to the viewfinder. Yeah. I, mean, I love that. I don't know why nobody else did it. Well, you did it now. Yeah, we did um, it. Yeah, yeah, X-T20's got it coming. It's well, coming that, with the new so firmware. So it does have it coming on the X-T20? Yeah, X2 the X-T20 will get that on the next firmware that's coming along at around the same time. It's I think it's a little bit after the X-T2 and the X-Pro2 and GFX firmware. So. Right, right. Um, we're going to have that touch. With yeah, the we will. That's so there you go. So there. don't buy XC3s for Christmas. There we go. Don't buy them. Just wait for it. Just get XC20s <laughs> and uh, just hang, hang on because they look so much nicer. And just hang on a little bit and you're going to get that uh, cool punch. And then, you know, the yeah, there you go. <laughs> Great. Good salesmanship, Jerry. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. It. <laughs> this is one thing where I definitely say a lot of people just do some research and then order a camera directly. Actually go in. You got to feel it. Yeah. Feel see what feels good in your hand. You got and, it. And I think that just goes without saying with pretty much any camera, really. I mean, sure. you, you really do want to feel it. It's about this shooting experience mm -hmm. at the end of the and day. And here especially, I mean, Fuji's really saying, look, you can have a very similar camera. That'll suit your what you need uh, on yeah. a technical point, you know, point of view. Right. But get in your hands. It's a totally different interface. Yeah. It's a totally different way of navigating. And, and you might really dig that. I mean, a lot of people love the pinching and zooming and grabbing and swiping and stuff. They're yeah. used to that now. I mean, so it's the iPhone, yeah, like iPhone, Android, that, those kind of things where you... And if you're yeah, a Luddite you like me, it. X-T20 has the more classic camera controls yeah. and right. that works well too. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. Any uh, X-T3 questions before we jump onto the 8 email everyone's excited uh, about? You can say hello to Mr. Jared Poland. Hi, Jared. Hi, hey, Jared. And also Fuji Rumors. Is Hi. also Pat in the room. Hey. So Patrick. 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 Patrick uh, <laughs> if you want to divulge any company secrets, now's the time. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's <laughs> um, Now, one question is how fast is the autofocus compared to the X-T2? So it's more about the tracking algorithms rather than the single shot, as we were earlier uh, alluding to. So it's more about being able to capture and, and track that that uh, subject while it's moving. It seems to get a little bit less distracted, mm. is what I found. Yeah. Um, we were shooting, we went out and did a photo walk with mm -hmm. Neil Zeller, where I was testing that, and there's a ton of people walking around in the background. So I would choose a subject that's moving and track that. And I would find occasionally with some of the earlier firmware, if it saw another face or something like that, even if you were in single point autofocus, could get confused, mm -hmm. where I found it was much more consistent for tracking the initial subject that I acquired yep. is where I saw the primary difference there. And we have to remember too, a lot of people are talking about focus speed purely, and we're getting to the point now where that's so dependent yeah. on the lens, not it necessarily yeah. the body. You know, it is. If you grab some of those earliest, like the 35 F1 fours or something right. like that, yeah. you're not gonna see that huge advantage with speed. Yeah. Where you might with some of the newer, like the F2s, um, and then some of the- And the, the 80, and the 80 mil. The 80 mil's got a, a special kind of autofocusing system in it where it's using two different lenses to for close focus and far focus, right? Sure. So it, it, when you switch it and whatnot, so it speeds up the focus time right, on a single right. point level. Depending I mean, on the 60 mil macro, we took it out with the X-E3, tried it, and there's right. an example of where, I mean, it's not terrible focus, no. but it is definitely slower than some of the other glass, right? So definitely. it is lens dependent on the speed, but yeah. yeah, I want a higher hit rate. What I don't want is to get home and realize that three of the shots that I actually really, really wanted are right. slightly out of focus. Right, where it And is. Uh, yeah. yeah, the X-E3 was very impressive. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna test it more, but I've got to say, we noticed a difference for sure. Yeah. Can Sure. to see the video on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that'll be coming out probably mid next week, I would uh, A couple oh, months awesome. or so. Yeah, depending on <laughs> January. GH5 video. Um. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I can pull up the timeline on this thing. It's uh, absurd. Another thing. Um, yeah, can we get face detect in 4K? Oh, that's a good We question. would like that, actually, yeah. Um, mm. Right now, that's not available, but... That's something where we would really like to see, yeah, for sure. Video? Yeah, I have to agree with that. There you go, yeah. Well, I have to definitely agree on that. I found video puts us, a, a lot of people, in a really interesting place because it just seems to come down to processing power right now. Yeah. That was what we hear over and over is like, we're trying to make it work with the computer we've got in the yeah, camera, correct. but just recording 4K is very demanding as opposed to popping yes. stills. So and I'd love to see it because if you can select your focus point, Fuji actually has amazing continuous autofocus sure, video. It's really good. Yeah. I would put them up there with, of course, Canon number one, but I would say Sony and Fuji are kind of bouncing back and forth for best video autofocus. So yeah, having face detect on there would be great for vloggers. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 that's exactly Maybe right. Maybe Fuji would make the first vlogging camera. I don't know. I mean, I would say this, whether you were standing or sitting next to me or not. Yeah. Um, I mean, the nice thing is, yeah, Fuji does tend to listen yeah. and they really do add a lot of features after the camera comes out in yeah. a big bad way. And not just bug fixes. No. Totally new feature. So maybe we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I'd love to see it. Yeah. I'd really sure. love to see it. For sure. Um, the Ron sound. There we go. He does, the uh, sound. Jerry, yes. have you held the the prototype 8x16? <laughs> the what? The prototype 8x16. 8 8, 8 to 16 millimeter. No, then. I haven't yet. No, you no, haven't. No, I haven't. I've okay. only seen the pictures just like you guys, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Patrick. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That, that may or may not be the truth, but that's pretty much all you're going to get. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, you're... We like, haven't. I am. Uh, no. I, I mean, I haven't seen... the. I've seen pictures of the mock-up like everybody else on the on the uh, roadmap and things mm -hmm. like that, but that's it. That's I haven't yep. seen anything else. Okay. Well, we do have an 80 mil, an yeah. early 80 mil, which yeah, we're going to yeah, play yeah. with here. Yeah, so, right. so we were talking about this a little bit. We have an 80 mil here. Yeah. Is this, this is still pre-production? It is, okay. it is, yeah. it is a pre-production unit. So we're yeah. gonna shoot it, we're gonna show some images, sure. but this is not a review no. of the no. lens. No, no, no. Okay. Although I've shot a bit with it already and I'm pretty impressed with the yeah. results. Yeah, even though it is a, a pre-production model. Ron looks like he's got something, his yeah. eyes are oh, yeah. darting around. Questions. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got a couple of them coming down the pipes. Uh, awesome. Fuji has been great with firmware upgrades, but I haven't seen anything for over a year for my XT10 or XT10 and XE2. What's mm. up? XE2 or XE2S, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know if they're working on anything specific for those models. Like yeah. we did say, like with the X100, the original one where the X100S was out, what, six months, and then Fuji came out with that last big firmware, <laughs> firmware update for, the for it, for the 100. I'd love to um, see something like that. Uh, we would too. We would like to see some added improvement or added uh, features that if they can do it. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, like, what happened, though, with the X-T10, it was basically the last, really the last camera before with the 16 megapixel right. sensor. So by the time they got to that one, I'm going to... I think, anyways, they pretty much maxed out what they were able to right. do programming wise. I mean, firmware is great and everything, but you have to have the technical capabilities and the hardware to support. The yeah, absolutely. Make, I mean, yeah. you can, it's you not can just write a magic code. thing where you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, we can add whatever we want. Like, yeah. it's yeah. now 36 megapixels. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if only. Yeah, oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'd still <laughs> love to see some of the interface changes as opposed to just raw. Like features. the menu. Sure. A lot of, yeah, yeah, uh, we would too. We would. We, we, I know uh, myself personally. I, I I still shoot with the XT1. Yeah, um, cool. and I love it, but I'd like to see like the new menu or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was a huge improvement. Yeah. It was. It hopefully, was. hopefully yeah. someone's listening. Yeah. Uh, Jerry's listening. I'm always listening. <laughs> <laughs> Is F Log going to be internal with the XT3? Has this been answered already? <laughs> nope. Uh, Patrick, you, you know, you know, he can't talk Is about it, that. <laughs> what Is it possible? That? Is it possible to update? Oh no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he, maybe he mistyped. That's all. Um, is it possible for an update to the XT2 to enable F-Log recording internally? I would love to see that. Yeah, uh, we do too. Uh, yeah, we really I, do. I know it's when, anytime you're with a log, every bit of color information you can get is yeah. really valuable, which mm -hmm. is why it makes sense, if you can, to record externally. But sometimes I'm like, I don't need that color. Depth. Oh, sure. I just need the dynamic range. And for that, it would be killer to have that option to record it internally. Even if there was the potential, we'd see some banding, you know, some skin tone shifts or something. Yeah. Sometimes I just need that sky and those shadows. This is all good, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're taking mental notes. Right? Absolutely. Okay, we'll uh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm sure uh, quite a few people are watching, <laughs> listening. So, so I'm, I'm not too yeah, concerned Yeah, your job's there. on the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuji's watching right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're watching to make sure I don't screw up. 
<laughs> Anything else before we jump over to the 80 run? Uh, I want to talk about the 80. <laughs> higher than 720p by doing video in the app? Oh, good question. Yeah, mm. that would be really cool. I think the the um, right now we are limited to yeah twenty seven twenty p for being able to actually transfer it to the phone. Right. I think it basically it has to do with file size and being able to get that transferred efficiently over. Right. Right. Um, Without looking terrible. With, yeah, and, yeah. and it, well, that's the other key, right? So um, it would be nice. I'd love to see that too. I mean, these are all features we'd all love to see. Yeah, obviously. For sure, I mean, right? goes without saying, but uh, that's not something that I know of. Uh, right now. I think it'd be great to give you the option just with yeah. a disclaimer like, are you sure you want to transfer these 4K files? Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you're going to be here for 36 minutes. Yeah, your phone's yeah, going to exactly. be dead by the time you Right, make sure your phone's plugged in yeah. and make sure you have enough power or like bat or space on Absolutely. your phone But I think it'd be great well. to have the option because again, our cell phones are now shooting 4K video. Um, yep. And yeah. the Fujis shoot beautiful video. Yep. It'd be great to and move it over. we've got the bandwidth but to again, that now. But again, with a disclaimer, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think the thing to remember too is, you know, you're from Fuji Canada. Yes. Here in Canada, our bandwidth is absolute garbage so yes, we just don't need agree. though we can't I stream agree. that you know <laughs> but if you're in europe or maybe united states or i could see you be upset yeah okay yeah. 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 um canadian perspective yeah canadian perspective <laughs> we don't need 1080 no can't handle it would crash our computers wow okay um Coming fast and furious yeah <laughs> fa fast and furious uh is there going to be isbs and xt2s Feel free to just randomly agree to things. Yeah, just yeah. randomly agree. Yeah. What None I'll do, of this what is what factual. Yeah, There's what I'll do with as a disclaimer is that yeah. I can't comment on any unreleased product. Right. Jerry, what, what I'm going to throw something out that, and again, I have no information whatsoever. Here's my theory. Okay. Wink at me. Um, Fuji has for a long time said that they're concerned about corners as their reason for avoiding in-body IS. But... There's, on the X-T2, which shoots beautiful video, a 1.7 crop factor. So maybe we might see some IBIS for video shooters down the road, potentially. Yeah, cool. well, might make sense with that. I mean, I personally crop. love IBIS. I yeah. mean, uh, I, he's a wonderful man. In a yeah. pre, <laughs> that's awesome, I love that. Um, the uh, the first than, like one of the first of digital cat. cameras I I used before I worked for Fuji Film um, had in body stabilization in it and it was amazing and I loved it so I'm really hoping that we can do that as well. I just want to know is the next X100 going to be a G or are you going to like skip a letter? Is yeah, I know. Like yeah, we were kind of laughing because um, like the S because sec well it was actually you're all over the place S, yeah F, right and then T but that was like second third fourth right. so when we get the, the fifth version of it. You're out of letters, yeah. There's yeah, just, we're out of letters. There's going to be a five. Yeah, it'll be a five. So that's the end of the X100. It'll be a V. Yeah. No, it'll, yeah, be, it'll a be a V. V. For, yeah, X100V. That's yeah, what's coming up okay. next. There you Speaking go. Speaking of the X100V, is there going to be a flippy screen? <laughs> <laughs> on an X100? Okay. You guys have not changed that body design since the nope. inception, pretty much. Pretty Minor much it stayed changes. The yeah. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So no, we, we're not changing. I, I can't foresee in. I like it the way it is. I don't want to change personally. I like so, it. For street photography, I'd love to see Tilty. I'm very. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm a tilty. But fan. you have to remember that that part of the body design that Fuji did with the X100 wasn't just for for um, its looks. It was heat sink capabilities. Yeah. It was you know being able to spread off the the heat from the circuit board. So maybe a flippy screen doesn't work necessarily yeah. for that. You know the, the aluminum not. body is required. Yeah, it's certainly one more bulked up. That's for sure. All for right, sure. So it does. It will make it bigger. That's no question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rumor confirmed. It may or may not have a flippy <laughs> screen. <Yeah. laughs> um, the answer is maybe. It's. Uh, we know that Fuji has already made huge improvements with video. Yes, Do you yes. ever think that Fuji will ever try to compete with the high-end uh, cams and make a Fuji cinema camera? Well, we already make the MK lenses. Yeah, yeah, for the sure. MK which, series. which are available in XF mount soon, so that's yeah. telling. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are. Uh, we want the full solution. I think is that it, is just like answer? every yeah. it, like just like every manufacturer wants. They, we want you to use our cameras for everything. Well, see, but there, right. it's funny that you say that because not all manufacturers necessarily want that. You know, so uh, which I think again is kind of a testament to the Fuji product. Is just uh, the firmware updates are great. You already have a reputation for that. The glass is good, but also you have a company that basically was. And we even complained about it. It's like, you guys are ignoring video. You're not really doing anything with video. This is a couple of years, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, bam, bam, bam. bam. There you go, right? Yeah. Like, and that's because video, people ask for it, right? Sure. One other thing I want to throw out there. We were, when we were in Japan, I was like, please give me an XF mount 
MK lens. I really wanted that while we were out shooting there. And they were yep. like, no, nah, it's not ready yet. I'm like, what's to get ready? Just slap an XF mount on the back of it. And they're like, no, it's going to have autofocus. It's going to communicate with the camera body. So, I mean, clearly that's showing if they're designing these lenses and yeah. adding features for the XF mount, they're going to continue to There's take no, video There's no, obviously we can't seriously. say for sure, but I All would, I would confidently to, say that Fuji we, is definitely looking forward to to doing good this video is an work. This is a very educated guess. Yes, yeah, very educated <laughs> guess that Fuji's doing very, very good uh, good cinema work. And that's great. That's great to see. Yeah, no, yeah. I, and and more and more, I mean, um, I, myself, I mean, we use... I mean, we use our own cameras for our YouTube channel as well, right? right? So we're video guys as well. We we exactly. love the video. Um, we use the XT20 for most of it. Mm -hmm. And um, Fujinon has great. only been in the film industry for oh, I don't like know. decades upon yeah. decades. Yeah, upon yeah, decades, yeah, upon yeah, decades, yeah. Like decades. So I mean, I mean we're, we're still one of the major uh, lens manufacturers for Cine lenses, yeah. high-end Cine it's lenses. It's not like you guys are strangers mm -hmm. to yeah. this stuff. Broadcast no. is huge for you yeah. guys. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a Makes big market sense. for us. Cool. cool. So rumor confirmed X105 is going to be a full cinema camera. <laughs> full cinema camera, full frame, 43 <laughs> megapixels. Yep. It's going to have a flip screen, IBIS, wow. and it's going to actually have a zoom lens. I just lost my job. But yep. it'll be 1.4 <laughs> all the way through. Yeah. 24 to 200, 1.8. This has been a very exciting live show. Wow. Yeah, it has been. You heard it, it here first. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> Sorry. X105, large format. Yeah. Yeah. Digital. Oh, well, let's get a GFX X100, by the way. Yeah. Really celebrate <laughs> yeah. that Fuji tradition. Yeah. That'd sure. be amazing. Do a rangefinder sure. style, actually, medium format. That'd actually, that's static. not the first time I've heard that, to well, be honest with you. People are clamoring for GW series cameras right. from you in the digital format. Yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see Like that a giant too. sensor, and then you could do all the different aspect ratios, just oh, cropping on a high res sensor. Like you do on the GFX. Yeah, like you do on the GFX. Hey. But it has to look like a GW. No, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. Sexy rangefinder. Yeah. Ooh. That would be really and it'll cool, have IBIS absolutely. and a flippy screen. <laughs> I'm going to make Ron going, eh, my ringtone. <laughs> yeah? What about the 33 F1? Uh, People keep on talking. Really? Oh, you mean they want it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 33 F1. Yeah. I, that'd be hot. I've, I've that'd be a big and expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It would be big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and expensive. Yeah. F1. Any F1 lens yeah. to me would be uh, would be expensive. I mean, we always want to see new stuff and cool stuff. And I, I think right now, as far as lens lenses coming down the future, we're looking at the 8 to 16 and the 200 F2 that are coming down. Oh, well, there you go. There's fast glass. Yeah. Well, that's sure. that's on the roadmap. We've, we've yeah. announced that. And, and that we hope to get out by next year and, and get going with that. So and, cool. and I think we're starting to fill the gaps that that we need. Yeah. Well, and you know, why don't we talk about the 80 mil now? Because yeah. cause that really does fill a gap. I mean, one thing that was kind of lagging behind was one-to-one -one macro. Right? Yeah, it was. Fuji users want one-to-one -one macro. Yeah, yeah. It, it seemed funny to have, like I would say, for the number of lenses to the range they cover, the Fuji lens lineup is one of the most complete ones out there for mirrorless bodies. Absolutely. But this was definitely a huge gap in the it line. Was. Yeah. And I know it's gone through a few iterations as well. Sure. Um, yeah. Because originally it was supposed to be a 90, I believe. On or? the on the original roadmap. Yeah. So it is public, so I could talk yeah. about that. Yeah. It was a 120. Oh, yeah, oh that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 it was a 120, right. and um, it. I, I think the, they had to balance size, weight, and everything right. else. Could right. you imagine? Like that's. This is. That's I, a, this I mean, is a considerable. Lens. It's a fairly chunky lens. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, but it has OIS in it, um, mm -hmm. which is our first stabilized prime lens. Yeah, so just as a warning, when and I mean, who knows what the, the production body will be like, but uh, just for anybody who does choose to buy this lens in the future, I'm sure there'll be many, when you pick it up, you take it home, you pick it up, and you move it, and it goes clunk, 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 clunk. Yeah. It's not broken. Nope. Don't yeah. bring it back to the store. No, no, no. It's going to work great. Right. It will. It's just the IBIS module. You, t you turn it. Well, you, it's, well, it's, well, the, IBIS, it's a linear the motor. OIS module. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a linear motor, it on. actually. Just to make it clear, it's a linear motor. Oh, okay. So the 90 millimeter, mm -hmm. the 50 to 140, and the 80 mil all have linear motors in them. Oh, so perfect. when there's no current to the lens, the linear it's motor floats. There loose, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the lens. Everything's cool. Don't it's bring it back. all good. Don't bring it yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's we should good. also mention, obviously we've got the camera here, you can see it, but we are linked up here to Jordan's laptop and that's because we're also using uh, the X Acquire software. Right. Tell us a little bit about that before we kind of play with this. So the X Acquire is a, a nice little uh, basic free tethering tool that allows you to use so if you're using multiple different softwares and you want to be able to auto import and things like that and be able to have the camera tethered, that's all it does. It lets right. you create a, a hot folder 
and then you just sync to that hot folder. Right, and shows your settings. Yeah. And it, now, I should note that when we take pictures here, we don't even, I mean, it's a good idea to have a card on the camera, but yes. you don't need one. Nope. It goes straight to the, the laptop. Correct. We're just going into preview so we can see the JPEGs quick, but you yeah. go capture one, you Absolutely. go Lightroom, it's gonna whatever, work out. Whatever, whatever destination raw, folder will read. Yeah, yeah, whatever raw software you like to use, you can certainly do that, whether it's our software or as you mentioned, Capture One, Lightroom. Very cool. Yeah, you should take pictures. Yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> so um, I do have. I, I've been playing with this lens. We've got it manually focused, basically right at the one to one minimum distance. Cool. One thing I will say uh, as a complaint for me here on this lens, you know, Fuji does do a really good job with putting manual clutches on a lot of your lenses. Yeah, you right? mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. And this lens should have a manual have a clutch. clutch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't. This is one of the lenses people are going to be constantly right. focusing yeah. manually, even if you're not shooting video with it. Uh, and we just posted a video saying, thank you, Fuji, for bringing the clutch <laughs> system. That's a huge step in the right direction. I would love to there see one on this. I mean, I'm sure it would make it a little bigger, but it's a big lens to start yeah. with. So. I like it. Just, you know, you've got the punch and focus. You've got the split prism stuff. Yeah. It does help, but it focus does. by wire. It's nice for manual focus just to have that. So that there's still room for clutch. that 120 macro down the road. There you with go. The manual focus, manual clutch. focus clutch. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it would be a big beast if we did that, with, especially with the manual clutch. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, there look what you go. have to carry when you do macro anyways, right? That's, like it's, you well, know. With the OIS and that thing, you can handheld your macro. Sure you can. Right? Those quick bugs, man, they don't sit still. <laughs> so you, you gotta follow those little uh, those now, bugs for that. We're cutting yeah. over, we're cutting over. So camera turned on, the X acquire picks it up right away. Yeah. yeah. You can We've see got we've our got folder metadata here. right here. We've got our metadata. We're on the computer now. Hopefully, we're clicking over. We're on the computer now. Beautiful. And so, uh, yeah, you know, and I'm using a focusing rail here just because that does give us that flexibility. And we'll focus here. Nice. Ooh, one to one, bam. And we can see it just drops right in. Bam, look at that. Now what's of note as well is this is also compatible with the tellies. Right. The 1.4 and the two-time teleconverters. Right. Yeah, yeah, talk about that because so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so the two-time teleconverter is going to get you two to one. Yeah. So even closer, maintaining your minimum focus distances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other advantage too is that uh, you still maintain, with the 1.4, you still maintain your phase detection autofocus as well. Right. Cool. So it, you're getting, so it helps fill that gap. It helps you get to the 120 yeah, or even you, the 160 millimeter um, yeah. range as well with the two time. One other thing I did notice, and we can see it a little bit here, um, but out of focus rendition on this lens uh, is really okay, gorgeous. Yeah. Even stop down. Um, I know we're wide open right now, but you knock that back a little bit. And, and you again, can see we still have a really gorgeous, smooth out of focus. I know that this isn't going to be an amazing test because this is a pre-production lens. We can't really do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lens out of focus here, and let's just see if the autofocus can do a good job acquiring it. So no. here we go. Now our viewers can't see this, so no. I will tell you before. Okay, Chris is now focusing three, two, one. We have focus. Oh yeah. So. Nice and sweet. And again, this is on an X-T2 that we're tethering, just yeah. so you know. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, we've, we've got our focus. I also no really problem. like that we have three steps on the focus limiter. Not a lot of macro lenses right. have it. So you can set it up if you're just going to use it as like a portrait lens, where this is going to excel as well, um, in the macro range, or you can have it run the complete yeah. range as well, but with a definite autofocus hit because it's switching between those two motors. Oh, it's sharp. Exactly. And that's how, that's how it makes it uh, so quick, is because it uses those two lenses. Yeah. Exactly. And again, hopefully the viewers home can see, you know, when we come back, when we come back to the camera setup eventually. Uh, I mean, our working distance is actually pretty good here. I mean, yeah. our minimum focus distance, we're getting... We're it's getting 25 centimeters, much. right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it gets pretty close. Yeah, for one-to-one -one macro, this is still giving you enough room if you're doing some insect photography or things like that. Yeah. I don't think it's you get light in there. We're not to blocking get a one-to-one, -one. yeah. You know, I guess, you know, like 120 macro, the original plan would give you really excellent working distance, but yeah. of course, bulky. I think this works really well. It is yeah, big, we had to balance it. It is a big hood. Uh, factor that in if you're going to go shoot and you're worried about Hoods. light hitting it from yeah, odd angles. Yeah. Um, but it looks like you're focused even closer with that, so that's impressive. Yeah. Was that shot at F2 just now? This is shot at 2.8. Yeah, 2.8 lens. Yeah, f2.8. Uh, here, let's stop that down a little bit, and you can get a look at what some of that out-of-focus rendition looks yeah. like at 5.6. That'd be nice. Yeah, let's do it. Now, I am, because I should be doing this in the proper way, uh, going to put on the self-timer, just so that we don't, we um, you know. Don't give it any shimmy shakes. Yeah, so, so folks, this is ISO 400. This is third of a second at 5.6, because it's dark as hell in here, but we'll just let it do its thing. Bam. Magnifique. And that's quick. Yeah, right to there. And yeah, there you again, go. That's a 5.6. Yeah, it's USB 3, so it's really quick. 
Yeah. So again, we don't typically what we'll start to see is the edges getting a little bit harsher when we stop down sure. the lens. Between 2.8 and 5.6, you're just making the difference creatively for depth of field, but you're not really making a penalty, seeing a penalty okay. in terms of your Don't move, be still. Okay. This is at F13, uh, just for fun. Yeah, so there so you can Google's, see our depth of field expanding. But again, if we look at those highlights there, uh, yep, nice which, rendition. hey, this is cool. I have a, mi a mouse, a mice. <laughs> so we can actually point you where I'm looking. Yeah, there you uh, go. You can see, still really lovely on it. Nice detail. Yeah. Lovely. Any questions coming through, Rondo? Rhonda? Rhonda. Oh, we should just call him Rhonda from now on. <laughs> I wanted to call him Ron Wonton, but Rhonda's good. Yeah. Let's see. Impressed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Impressed love, is a good lo comment. Love to see it stopped down. Stopped it down. There yeah. you go. Uh, What's Canadian retail going to be on this guy? That's here? a good question. <sighs> Now I'm trying to remember what it was now. Now you guys caught me off guard. Go to thecamerastore.com. There, the there you, you go. You can pre-order it right now. <laughs> that, there's the answer to that And question. you can check the price. No, I will look this up. Right <laughs> now. I, I'm sorry. I just totally no, got that's on okay. that. Don't show my screen right now, Ron. I'm, I'm a fishing. Yeah, you, don't, you do not want to see what Jordan's Google searches involve. Jeff's actually looking at prices. Oh, okay. Awesome, guys. Awesome. Da, 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 da. Any other questions? Or so why am I doing that? Yeah. Questions, comments? Uh, can you take a portrait with the lens? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Um, that, but then I have to be a photographer for reals? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, Is everybody good with the macro? We're all good with the macro part of yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to disassemble the macro setup. Okay. But we'll keep it tethered I so keep we can take these files in. Um, uh, how I, much? Th I think Jerry should definitely be the subject. Yeah, let me take a picture of Jerry. I just had a uh, V-mount battery fall on my forehead right you before did. we started rolling, and I'm a little blemished and marked up. So, oh. uh, put the two times teleconverter on there. Don't have it handy. Um, how much is the eight by fourteen going to be? And Jeremy's going to get a little uh, bit more light in uh, there. We don't have pricing on the new lenses yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess twenty one hundred dollars. Uh, it here first. It. Fifteen ninety nine ninety nine Canadian go. for the eighty mil. Yeah. Look at look at oh yeah no look that way. Perfect uh, just like that. Oh I love it I love it oh I love it. Jordan you copped out. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Oh a little, a little hot. A little hot. hot. That eye looks good though. Focus is good. Don't judge my photography on live TV. <laughs> this is not a portrait <laughs> setup. Yeah well, that was just quick and dirty. Yeah uh, that was very quick and yeah. very dirty. All right, let's zoom in here. Get this thing out of the way. Oh, did we have to do that? Yeah, Holy we had cow. to do that. <laughs> look but at, look at that, that handheld. Holy yeah, cow. handheld, IS, nice and sharp. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, Piotr, I'll ask. Uh, Trust me, it's, any, on, it's anything on YouTube. It's going to look like you have foundation. Uh, right? Anything about a refresh for the original 3514? I'd love to see it. So we're focused on the new lenses that are on the roadmap now. Uh, um, and then I think, at least I hope, that they're going to start looking at some of the like either the, the gaps. The 18 F2. The 18, the some four. of the gaps that we might still have, like maybe a fisheye or something like that. I know I know the Fuji guys are really pumped about about wanting to get a fisheye, Fujinon fisheye, like a, a really, right. we really want one. Mm -hmm. um, we've been asking for it, so we're hoping for something okay. like along those lines. That's what we would like to see. Yeah. Um, but as far as the refreshes and things like that, that would be cool. I would really love to see that, especially that 3514. I just love how mm. sharp that lens really is. Um, but I'm nervous about taking it out because it's not a weather sealed lens. It's or interesting, like yeah. That. Like when, when Fuji first came out um, with the X series, that lens yeah, sold like crazy. It did. And now, yeah, people are really into the F2s with the WR. I prefer slower glass myself. I, li I love the F2. Yeah, so do I. But, you know, yeah, people are still going to have that love affair with wide aperture glass. Yeah, so and maybe. especially if you're doing those landscapes, you know, or, or even uh, night photography or things yeah, like sure. that. You, 16 you do. does well. Oh, sure. it does a great yeah. job, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, I think I'd love to see that personally. I'd really love to see that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I had a sneeze. Uh, one oh. other thing I would love to uh, just throw this out to Fuji right now. One of the reasons people buy Fuji cameras is the 1855 kit lens. I would love to see an autofocus update for that. Oh, Because um, right. that is still one of the oldest lenses in the lineup. Sure. So we did a firmware update just recently yes. on that to help with the algorithms yeah. to prepare for uh, for the XE3 for as the well. So yeah, so there is I would like well. a nice water resistant compact lens. 
You know, 18135 is great, but yeah, it's big. 1650 it is big. Is big. You know, it's big. I'd like to see a nice, compact 1855 WR. Yeah. Please. Okay, I'll ask for it. You can make it I'll thicker, it. just not longer. Yeah. yeah, I'll ask for it. I'd like, I'd like to see, well, as we see all of our current lenses, anything coming out new is weather sealed right out of the gate. We're seeing it. We're seeing a lot of that, yeah. Yeah, all the WR, all the lenses that are coming out are WR. So yeah, I think I think that's a safe. Very cool. Um, not a bet, but a safe uh, uh, hope that they're going to come. Yeah, with <laughs> the future, the, the, the Fuji future, future is hopeful. Is, is yes. very hopeful that it'll <laughs> all be hopeful. weather sealed. Well, I mean, the, the high end stuff is all weather sealed. The Xport two, XT two. Um, so I think, yeah, uh, I think I'd love to see that. Yeah, everything cool. weather sealed. Anything else, Ronchi? Uh, Ronchi. Oh, there I like go. that too. Yeah. Or, or Sriracha. Uh, <laughs> sriracha. What's yeah. Sriracha on your Sriracha? Uh, any news on what's going to be... Ron Bon Jovi. Shush. Like. Any news what's going to be updated on the X-T20? So for on the firmware updates, yeah, so that would be one. yeah the announcement. The only well yeah because we'll see what comes up. Um, so right now to be the ability to use the touch screen to choose your autofocus while awesome. you're looking I through the it. viewfinder. I love it. So that's that's the only uh, real update for the one that's coming in November. Yeah. Um, will the X105 be weather resistant? Yes, and it'll also be bulletproof. Um, <laughs> nice. Yep. Uh, nice. Yeah. Let's Secrets see. Are all it'll here. vibrate <laughs> to the MP3s on your iPhone. Yeah, there's that too. Uh, let's see. What about okay. digital image stabilization on video on the XE3? Is that too much to ask for? Possibly. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, the electronic. Uh, rumor yeah. has it the X seat. Do all your electronic stabilization in yeah. post. Then yeah. you don't have a crop be factor. There you go. Yeah, we're not a huge fan of, of digital image stabilization. No, in even, even some video. of the best implementation, I'd say Canon has the best right now. I still hey. turn it off because you're better yeah. served doing it afterwards and you're still capturing your whole frame. If you but IBIS, I think IBIS would be a big, uh, that would be a big frontier that for you guys cool. to, to cut into. Well noted. For sure. yeah. 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 Well noted. That would be a nice, yeah, everybody wants IBIS now. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, irritable bowel um, syndromes. <laughs> 80 millimeter release date? Uh, it should start shipping. Don't promise Christmas. Some, <laughs> sometime <laughs> we're, we're, before we're, or after Christmas. <laughs> well, we're hoping November. There you oh, go. Good. Which all is going well. All going well. Get Don't want to promise what? anything. Which, which is before. Now. Which is before. But Christmas. it could possibly be after Christmas. But that's um, again, all going well. Hopeful. November. That would be awesome. That, that would be, be very awesome. awesome. Are you guys making a tilt shift lens? You personally. Don't know. Yeah, me personally. Are you, you personally making a Fuji tilt shift <laughs> lens? Um, <laughs> let's see. I do think because basically, well, all your tilt shift lenses are going to be manual focus right. lenses. This is one of those times where. Adapt your glass. Yeah, uh, there's no I was just going to suggest it. that. Yeah. Adapt your glass. Grab yeah. it in a Canon, an Icon yeah. shift, and away you go. It'll yeah. do a beautiful job um, on these. And if really you're a no GFX penalty. shooter, th there's adapters already available for those tilt adapted yes. lenses. Right. So, yeah, because yeah, they have such huge go. coverage. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, X-Series, um, there's new mounts being announced by different manufacturers yeah. all the time. Yeah, tilt shift is, is tough because that is a, a fairly small market, yeah. and it's a lot of R&D as far as lens It is, it is. I think, yeah, adapt it. Adapt it. Any future? Lens baby. Any, any future insight as to whether in newer firmware updates there might be a hint at possible focusing, focus stacking? Oh, I'd love focus to see stacking. That. Yeah. Oh, through tethering or just through the camera, guys? Uh, just through the camera. Hopefully so through the, the camera. Uh, D850 yeah. will has a built-in function where it'll shoot, shift the focus slightly, shoot, mm -hmm. shift the focus, builds it's those focus sweet. stacked images for you. It's yeah. pretty elegant. Yeah, Again, cool. it's all software. Um, Panasonic GH5 yeah. also does a very similar setup where it'll automatically scan through your photo, take multiple Rocks, shots, focus and then it'll like actually let you choose depth of field. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, but now that you guys have a killer macro, that would be something mm. to work on. It would oh. definitely be something to throw out there. Well noted. Yeah. Uh, are you guys going to make the app uh, for the remote control any more usable? We're constantly improving it. There you go. Uh, constantly um, working to make it better. The Bluetooth ad was a part of that, uh, yeah. and I think you, you'll see more and more um, stability and, and just functionality more and more. Uh, more of a just question on non-OEM optics. Uh, have companies been courting you in regards to making glasses for the Fuji X series? I 
guess the best way I can answer that one is I'm not privy to that information. Hey, there you <laughs> go. Perfect. Here's, um, uh, here's so something yeah. quite interesting is Zeiss brought out their um, Tuit lenses Correct. in the X In X format, yeah. yeah. Which never did very well because Fuji has, again, a very strong lens lineup. Those were quite close focal lengths. I would yeah. love to see some of the third party manufacturers filling the gaps, but it seems like what they're doing right now is right. bringing out a mirrorless and putting it available on a couple lens mounts. Yeah. In that case, it was so close to existing Fuji optics I mean, that with there Sony, wasn't much incentive. With Sony yeah. in the early days, it made sense. I, I like their lenses, absolutely. But yeah. at the beginning, people were like, oh, there's not a lot of lenses, you're lacking a lot of stuff. And that opened up a lot of room for Sigma and Zeiss to get in there. But yeah, right. Fuji, right off the start, you guys had a complete lens lineup. Um, did, yeah. And all your primes are excellent. So then you're like, well, why would I spend 1500 bucks to get I mean, I think, I, I think for me, the as an employee of Fujifilm and, and seeing kind of the, the growth or the, the genesis of the X-Series, we did this in seven years. Right? Yeah. 24 lenses in seven years. It's, yeah. to me, that's mind-boggling. And yep. not a lot of weak options in there, which we no. certainly, I mean, again, we love some of the Sony glass. Some of that Sony glass we don't love. Um, sure. So it's, it's nice. If there's a focal length you need, if you buy a Fuji, you're pretty certain yeah. that you're going to get good optics out. And again, you know that Fuji been making glass for decades upon decades upon decades upon yeah. decades. Yeah. Over, you should also... Uh, almost a century. You made the MK in an E-mount. If you guys made your kit 18 to 55 in a Sony mount, you would sell a ton oh. of those things. They don't have a single uh, good crop sensor <laughs> kit on. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Interesting uh, feedback. Except the aftermarket 1670 F4. Yeah, you're right. Any confirmation on the 80 millimeter uh, optic in or optic stabilization uh same or better than the 100 by 400 two days ago a fuji uk rep told me that it was the same as a five stop ois in mm. the 100 by 400 so it would be cool to confirm slash update this info no your messages are not broken hmm. the, okay that was a follow-up got, so <laughs> I'm just answering that. got you um <laughs> is it the same yes you get the same five stop stabilization um, it's pretty much the same technology. Five stops using. confirmed. Yeah. There, there you go. go. There you go. Uh, and remember, this is a much shorter focal length, so that means yeah. crazy slow. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. now, and again, I don't want to test that yet. I want to wait till we get a production, a production model. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. 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 Speed, yeah. I think I could see us doing a video on this lens. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I think we got to have another macro. Macro shootout. Coming up soon. Mm, That'd be go. fun. There you go. <laughs> And mirrorless party three there. Mirrorless party, you're right. Oh, I remember that one. That was a great video. That That's was awesome. so many more mirrorless cameras on the market now. So many more things and have changed. It would be like a like almost like a rave. Mm. Like, that'd well, be yeah, like a big, have, big party. Let's, like let's a with a production party. budget of zero and just broken dollhouses as our props, <laughs> maybe not. But we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Flashing lights, a little bit of music. You're good. <laughs> Tiny di maybe we could do a tiny pet-sized disco if an, ball. If anyone we'll has a large dollhouse that they're willing to loan us for a few weeks, there we could we maybe up the production. <laughs> <laughs> Please send Castle Grayskull. Um, Castle Grayskull. Man. Let's see. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> Sorry. Half of the show is us looking anxiously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can can wow. Uh, can the 10 by 24 be weather resistant for landscape? That's oh, kind yeah. of just a random question. Well, the 8 to 16 will be. Hey, there you go. Um, but the 10 to 24 um, right now is not. Yeah, and that um, is a tough one. Yeah. 8 to 16 is going to filter threads. Um. Hmm. I haven't seen it, so I'm not going to yeah. say. I yeah. believe it does. I hope I it can. does. I hope I've, it does, too. I mentioned this when we met with Fuji. What I would love to see is a small weather-sealed ultra-wide. I think would make a ton of yeah, sense. Yeah, you mentioned Because yeah. landscape photography is one of those things where you're constantly fighting the elements. I think it would yep. make a lot of sense to have a camera that you didn't have to stress about that. Sure. But still get ultra-wide coverage. So. Yeah. 816 sounds lovely, but we know it's going to be big and expensive. That's mm -hmm. not... Has thing. there been any inkling of a replacement for an X70. Ooh. No news yeah. that I'm aware of at Haha, this point. Take that, internet. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, that's where, you know... It, was, next, a, it was a fantastic camera. It was, it was. but just, it just didn't do well. There's our next unsung yeah. camera of yesterday. There you go. We have to wait a few more years. Um, yeah. <laughs> will the X-T3 have a fully flippy articulating screen? And it'll diffuse bombs. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Rumor confirmed. Uh, that was Jerry actually trying to diffuse there bombs, you go. metaphorical bombs. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. You got it. You yeah. got it. Uh, X acquire for X-T1? 
Yep. Hey, there you go. And um, the, yeah, the XT1 supported. XT1, yeah, which ones support the X Acquire stuff right now? So the tether, the tether cameras. So the XT1, the XT2, the X Pro 2, once it gets its firmware update. Okay. Um, Nathan and the GFX. Olson is and the GFX. Right yeah. Now. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So gotcha. those would be the ones. Yeah. So does Nathan have to take down his angry video about the X Pro 2 tethering support when this <laughs> we'll firmware see. comes we'll out? See, we'll see. I mean, it's good. I mean, at least Fuji gets around to it the, you know, the, eventually. I guess what we'll ask Nathan is to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, yeah, we, sh we should. I mean, again, oh, if you have questions, right. let us know. But uh, I just want to mention really quick, does the lighting look different to you folks at home? Yes. Uh, because, yes, we are actually shooting we're, under we're, uh, we're the shoot aperture. We got the aperture Cobb 300D. Um, just got my sample. Uh, we're going to be shooting kind of a review-y, like a, a fairly entry-level video for this yep. uh, on Monday with Nathan Elson. He's going to be shooting some portraits of us there because currently all the images you see of us on the splash pages and things are many years older and yeah. we've gotten a lot worse more than half a decade then. old yes. at this point. So we yeah. need to show our weathered, grizzled exterior yeah. now that YouTube has broken us. The, the, just <laughs> right. the weight on our God, shoulders. that got dark quickly. <laughs> yeah, so Unlike the Cobb 300D, which, which is beautiful. Right, yeah. 2K so equivalent. Perfect let's, let's get back to rapid fire. <laughs> Um, Beautiful hey guys, light. Hey guys, why would I pay one hundred dollars more for the XE3 over the XT20? Are there any advantages to the XE3? Uh, so the major one is going to be that smaller size, the joystick. Yeah. I yep. really yep. like. If yep. you if you're the kind of person who really likes to move your focus point around, that with the touch screen means it's yeah. excellent for those. The Bluetooth capability might be a feature that really does work for you well. Um, and again, I, I mean, for us, I think our price is fifty dollars difference at the store, I if I'm not so. mistaken. Yeah. So I mean, we we largely think that it's the same price. And again, those will probably wobble and change and whatever. The XT3 is brand new. Yep. The XT20 has been out for a while. But let's just say effectively the same price. Yeah, it comes down to handling. One thing I will say, I personally still sorry, I do prefer the XT20, right? Like I think people got that yep. already. But yeah. I would choose the XT20. I just feel the control structure fits me better. Yeah, and th and that's exactly what we're going and for. I like the prism look. I like the sort of, you know, little SLR. Yep. I like it better. I like the raised dials. Shut up, Ron. The one thing I will say very quickly, I'd love to see the prime lens kit available for the X-T20, because that's something ah. that would certainly push me towards the X-E3. Like the X-E3, the 23 mil. So it's kitted with that. Yeah, I'd love to absolutely. see the X-T20 with that as well. If you've already got some Fuji glass, that'd be a great way to get access to a killer little prime Quick lens. mention, anybody who is in Calgary or ordering in Canada online, Fuji did just go on sale. So yes, we've got a bunch of lens sales, sales going sales on. Right yeah, XT20 so. is on sale, uh, XT2, X Pro2, all See? of our lens, uh, a, a good selection, not all lenses. Yeah. Like the F2 primes, unfortunately, are not oh, on sale. And However, GFX. GFX is, oh my gosh, huge, huge sales, sales. With lens bundles. Like up to 1300 bucks off. Sales. It's yeah. crazy good yeah. deals. And I mean, with the 23 F2, this little kit, I love it. I mean, it's... Yeah, such it's, a nice, compact, it, beautiful design. So if you're yeah. the XE1 or XE2, where you already have the 18 to 55, this is the kit to get. And you can totally get the lens wet, but don't get the body wet. Correct. <laughs> Just dip the lens in. Don't really quickly, <laughs> while Ron's eyeing. Um, so I want to mention while we're talking about Click over to the computer Over here. to the computer. Yep. We do have um, pa the Panasonic Leica glass is on. Uh, Fuji's right there. Yeah, I know. Okay. But yeah, Panasonic is also on show. sale. It's yeah, your it's show. show. Yeah, absolutely. It's your yeah. show, guys. It's your uh, show. You know, talking about aftermarket support, you know, and Zeiss lens and stuff like that, trying to get in. Uh, Leica make some very nice designs that Panasonic build to incredibly high, very stringent standards. Uh, frankly, higher than, than most of their lens lineup. Yeah. These are premium made, uh, but really good pricing right now. You do get that Leica character, so check that out until the end of the month. Our local friends as well. We do like to mention some of the workshops going yep. on. Calgary um, Photo, Rob Moroto, good friend of mine personally. He does beautiful stuff. And uh, we've got a really nice real estate photography workshop bundle coming up. He's actually cool. doing two. Uh, yep. So if you do take both of them, you can save a little money there. Uh, but if you're interested in that kind of stuff, he has a great eye. I love that this isn't, there's certainly going to be some technical aspects to it, sure. but a lot of it's going to be visualizing interesting compositions, things like that. Yeah, you got to remember. You can it. make money with real estate photography, so save 20%. You can. And you'll make money with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And sell people's houses, right? I mean, this is a big part of why people are going to purchase houses. The photography should be good. Yeah. And if you'd like to do things like location portraiture, a lot of the techniques you'll learn here would be wonderful for that. You throw a model right there, like on the, right in that chair. Be a well, shot. what a perfect segue to uh, the other workshops we want to talk about. So <laughs> Ryan Hetherington Keys, Ryan HK, a uh, really big friend of ours. Um, we actually have a very interesting lighting workshop kind of thing. We're doing a different thing. He's doing three workshops. Uh, one being, uh, they're all location lighting workshops, but 
d uh, just different kinds of concepts. You know, a very basic lighting workshop, um, environmental portrait kind of stuff, and uh, and then a very advanced lighting workshop. Yeah, dramatic. He's calling. Yeah, dramatic it. lighting workshop. So beautiful portraits, very different from what you know the classic stuff is. It's really exciting stuff. You can take them individually if you feel I just want to do this kind of thing or I just want to get the advanced class. But if you take all three, you save 120 bucks, uh, yep. 480 for three full workshops. That's a killer deal. Yeah, and we love Rob. He's a great guy. So Not Rob. We love Ryan. We love Rob Ryan. too. Ryan. Oh. We love Ryan. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> But yeah, you want to shoot location lighting just as a, side, a segue, this is fantastic. Stuff. All right, back to us. We'll take a couple questions and we got to wrap this live yeah. show up. Uh, <laughs> can you tether with the XT20? No. 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 Okay. Um, let's see. I mean, maybe right. one now. day. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not now. I mean, if uh, people clamor for it, who knows? Any, any Get on those clamor photos. for it. Yeah. Any, any revival for the X10 premium point and shoot series? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the two third inch sensors no longer being made so but that, one inch one inch is big yeah I, I don't know i, I don't feel like know. the one inch market's really getting beat to death i uh, think right now uh, is, yeah. is kind of my perception yeah. oh i see what you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. uh there's just i mean sony I mean, and panasonic are dropping it out in every form factor yeah. canon as well yeah um you could just do nikon abandon the dl project make an ultra wide <laughs> angle uh one inch chip camera Get all those people who pre-ordered that DL, and uh, that's true. There you go. A lot of people would be excited. Uh, about that. And make it sexier will, than the DL. Will Fujifilm improve geotagging photos I'm, through the app? You mean? I don't know. Well, I guess <laughs> well, they, <laughs> you're, not, you're not the one actually typing the question. Jeez. I guess um, <laughs> geotagging. There's no context here. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's fair. Um, geotagging. Yeah, because right now with the Bluetooth, we don't have geotagging built into the cameras, so it's done through the Wi-Fi app. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier about the the Wi-Fi, we're always trying to improve that um, because we know people want that feature mm. in there. Uh, right now, the way it, it works with the Bluetooth with the XE3, it actually does do that a lot better than it did with our okay. Wi-Fi cameras. So it does do a better job at the geotagging and being able to quickly geotag the the camera through the app mm. without having to go back into the menus and things right. like that. Okay. So uh, they're working on it. Yeah, always. Always looking to make it better. When is the release of the XT3? Answer, when it's done. Uh, <laughs> Do you think they would choose a live broadcast of the show on a Saturday morning to announce when the XT3 is coming? Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> that would be a huge uh, get for us. You don't quite have that clout, yes. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah. We, we got the 80 mil uh, release. There you go. X, yeah. Hopefully X, November. Uh, Hopefully XT2 November. internal right. F-log possibility. Rewind to about an hour into this. And <laughs> there you go. Uh, new film, new film simulations one day. Fuji Neopan rumors. 400. Neopan 400. Neopan 400. And no, you should do Neopan else? 1600. And you should give us nerds the option to also shoot Neopan 1600 at a 640 push, um, <laughs> as a as a profile. There you go. Any other requests? in road? Uh, rumor confirmed <laughs> X100 Mark V able to shoot film. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, I would love, I would in all jokes aside, I would love a Neopan 400. So would I. That was one of my favorite profiles. I mean, Outcross cool. is great, but 400 has a very different dramatic kind of it contrast does. look it and does. brain structure. That would be awesome. Okay. Uh, is Fuji ever going to do full frame? That's a lot of glass and just shoot the Ooh. GFX and crop down to 35. We'll let Jerry do all the hard questions. Jerry, yeah. go for yeah, it. Yeah, uh, full frame. I, I, I think... I think it's been made very clear from day one that we weren't going to go full frame, and the idea was that we ended up going medium format instead right. um, to get that extra large sensor in there. So I, I don't foresee it. Um, as you alluded to, you'd have to make a whole chunk of new glass okay. to, to yeah. support that system. Well, and one thing you guys have done, because you and Sony are both the APS-C, the biggest yeah. of the mirrorless camera manufacturers, they were trying to support full frame and crop, and as a result, they have two not totally complete lens, lens lineups, lineups yeah. where Fuji has a very complete we wanted to singular focus lens on, lineup. On and I think line, that was yeah. a smart decision, but yeah, it's it's quite close. It is tough, yeah. you know? Yeah. I personally am not enamored by full frame as much as I used to be. I don't think it's that big a deal like it used to be, but um, 
Yeah, you know, Pentax uh, said they would never go full frame, and then they did. Yeah. Uh, so we can't ever say 100% no. No, uh, yeah, but, absolutely. You never know what the but future probably will hold. Not. If but you're like Pentax, uh, you could announce the full frame camera right now and wait 12 years before you actually is, bring it to market. So that would give you some time. Yeah, but Sony does have the monopoly right so, now, basically. Yeah. I mean, if you don't count Leica. Yeah. And uh, just to wrap it up, actually, yeah. uh, Fuji rumors. X100 line full frame, maybe? Question mark? Well, yeah, yeah. Again, yes, you know. and that'd be maybe sexy. No. That would be, that really would be sexy. Would be sexy. Yeah. You can make one lens. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it could be a twenty-eight this time. Jeez. All right. Oh, yeah. like budget the, like the a Q. Yeah. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Shots yeah. fired. Um, budget. I like love a the Q. Q. Okay. I love the Q shot. as well. Yeah. It was a great camera. And and that would be cool. And you could call it a GW something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the, you know what? We can wrap it up, actually. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Good. thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good to go. Jerry, thanks this for was coming. awesome. I, guys, thanks for having me. It was yeah. an no, awesome, awesome experience. Thank you much. Here. Thank you. Good. And uh, hopeful future. I think yes. that's kind of the thing. Hopeful future. Well, I, I think that goes without saying with all yeah. with all of us. So, yeah, I know we're, we're hoping. For uh, guys, if you are looking for future schedules, we're trying to suss all that out, but we will have them on the Camera Store TV page at thecamerastore.com. So, yeah. if you're curious, are those guys going to do a live show? We'll have that yeah. up and rolling this week. And we should so. say, I know we've been pretty kind of all over the place with like, are we doing it this week? Are we not? And our schedules are pretty tough. I mean, a lot of our Saturdays are off traveling or doing whatever. But uh, let us know if you'd prefer like every couple weeks. That's kind of what we've been doing lately is every couple weeks. Maybe that works better for you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards every two weeks, but if you're like, no, I need this once a week, it's what or keeps I will, me going, yeah. Yeah, then yeah. for you, we will continue. We will try week. our best yes. to do it. <laughs> Gary is saying once a month, because uh, <laughs> he is an unpaid intern. Gary just quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that'll be never it's again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we still have Ian. We're yeah, we're good. Well, Thank you, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, guys. Ian, don't get sick. Well, so thank you again for tuning yeah, thank in. Thank you. Uh, thank we'll you, have some thank cool you, live content coming up. And uh, yeah, check out, get your hands on an XC3, see how it feels for you. And if you're a macro shooter, the 80, 80 we mil. can definitely vouch for right cool. now. But it needs a focus clutch. All right, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks, wow, guys. what a cliffhanger. Yeah, what a whisper. <laughs> of